for coming. You know, I feel like I'm amongst the diehards. Because if you're here, and you just didn't write a check, and you came for Pakistan, then you're a diehard. And the other thing that I wanted to do was, no, no, you're not going anywhere. So I wanted to introduce this other diehard. And what we want to do first is just, look at his shirt. Two minutes set. And I want you to enjoy it. Uh, beating the drums on the table, just as a Pakistani parliament mini oh, That, or get up, or dance, or, or whatever else. So here it is, journey through Pakistan. Yeah. You with me? Supporter 
uh, of mine and Bill. So, uh, the, the fact that it's been saying to people in the field that all these organizations, when they work together in consortiums, when they do projects together, when each of them brings their own strengths to the table and coordinates together, this is when it serves the people best. And so I hope that there will be more of this kind of cooperation. The two logos that you see here are uh, CDRS. It's an organization that I founded in Pakistan. It's registered under the Pakistan Society Act, Societies Act. And then Shine Humanity is uh, an organization, kind of a sister organization, that we founded later with Pakistani American doctors from the Southern California area to uh, uh, fund uh, the projects that CDRS is doing. But Shine Humanity has now uh, of course, it's registered in the States. It's now gone on. I started missions in Haiti and Japan that have worked out very well for the beneficiaries that we've had. So these are the two organizations that I founded, and uh, they're working together hand in hand. This is me. Um, I was asked to tell my story from the beginning of my relief work, so uh, apologize for the bad hair. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, I was a musician running around the country playing music uh, for 15 years uh, in bands and as a solo artist, had CDs out, and I had a record deal. The guy that brought the Beatles and the Rolling Stones to America uh, had signed me to a deal, and I was to do a big showcase at a world-famous nightclub called CBGB's Nightclub uh, in Lower Manhattan, and that was scheduled for September 12, 2001. I was in the city on the morning of the 11th to get ready for that concert, and I saw the towers on fire, and my life changed forever. Of course, the concert was canceled. Uh, the commercial pursuit of music didn't mean much to me after that. Um, I went down to Ground Zero, and you can see me here. I'm a long-haired guy working. Um, I was getting supplies together, and I realized during that five days that I worked there until my services weren't needed, because then the larger efforts finally took shape. But for the first few days, what I was doing and bringing all kinds of different supplies to the firefighters and other people working in that area uh, was able to help a lot of people. And uh, I never really had any training in disaster relief except the fact that my life's been a disaster. So I think that probably prepared me for, for this. That's right. That's right. So uh, without any plan to get into disaster relief work all the time, that's not the way this worked out. It wasn't all of a sudden after 9-11, I said, okay, now I'm just going to be a disaster relief worker. Um, but then the tsunami happened, and I thought I could use some of the, uh, the, the experience that I had uh, to help in the tsunami when that terrible disaster happened. And then all these disasters, as we all know, happened. I went to Hurricane Katrina. You see me there. I worked with the, uh, I came down um, with Zodiac boats, and we gave them to the U.S. Army. But then after two weeks, I decided to stay, because the water went down in two weeks, after two weeks pretty much, most of New Orleans, but I was out rescuing kutas and bilis that had been, <laughs> that had been stranded or were trapped in their homes. And I love kutas and bilis, and even in Pakistan I'm rescuing them. So that, that leads me to Pakistan. The day that I got back from Hurricane Katrina was literally Five minutes, I had walked in the door, I gave my son a big hug, and I sat down, I brought him a pizza, and we were just sitting there, eating our pizza, turned on the television, and the earthquake in Pakistan is all over the news. It had just happened. It was the 8th of October when I came back. It would have been the morning of the 9th in Pakistan by the time that I had heard about the event. So they knew how bad it was, uh, and still didn't know quite how bad it was at that point, but they knew it was very bad. I immediately, this is what's great, here I am in Google country, and in the, uh, this area where the computers and the tech industry is, uh, I know most of you probably are working, uh, many of you are, you are knowing the people that, that do such great things with computers. It was actually Google.com that helped me connect with Pakistan, because I immediately got onto Google, and I Googled the number for the Pakistan Embassy in Washington, and I called them, and I said, hey, I've been in all these disasters as a logistics worker. Can you, can you use my help? They said, well, there's a team of Pakistani American doctors going, and I'll give you their number. So they gave me the number. I called them, Dr. Atif Malik in, uh, in Maryland. And right from that moment, I joined that team. And I started helping them with their supplies and their NOCs and their 
the Department of Homeland Security paperwork and all these hoops we had to jump through between PIA cargo, the President's Relief Fund, the Department of Homeland Security, and we finally got everything together and we went over to this area, this devastated area of Jalen Valley at the time. You see the snow mountains, the, the snow in the mountains, that's the line of control. And this is where I ended up uh, in a U.S. ship Chinook helicopter. This uh, lake here was created by the earthquake uh, when part of the mountain fell, killed a thousand people in that one event. This is me flying with the Pakistan Army uh, MI-17 Air Corps, and of course the U.S. Chinook helicopters that were big lifesavers in that event. You can see the Pakistan Army unloading supplies while we were taking uh, the most critically injured to hospitals in Islamabad and, and other places. Um, this was a very acute time, obviously, and uh, I came, I was only going to come for two weeks, but then I saw how bad it was, and two weeks became two months, and in that two months, I fell in love with the Hoopser and Medrin and Zabardust people of Pakistan. This is a beautiful baby that uh, wasn't injured in the earthquake, and it was a miracle for us because for three solid weeks before this baby came in, we didn't see a baby that wasn't hurt. Can you imagine going for three weeks seeing a baby that wasn't hurt? So this is like a miracle to us. It just needed formula. The young mom didn't have any formula for the baby. So uh, as you can see from this picture to now, I've gained a little bit of weight. I've gained 60 pounds, 65 pounds in Pakistan because of the Muslim Arcana. <laughs> Everybody wants to feed the Dora. And I, I mean, but I, I gotta tell you, both both the child was a dark man. So uh, I don't want to take up too much of everyone's time because I, uh, I can, this this uh, can be a long slideshow. So I'll just try to go through really quickly some of the things that we've accomplished since that acute, terrible emergency of the earthquake in 2005. We've been providing emergency and primary health care to government facilities in the earthquake-affected areas. We sponsored 12 originally, and some of them became self-sustaining, and, uh, and others we still support to this day. Um, medical camps in remote villages, you can see the road and the river are the same in some of these areas where our jeeps go, and some of my medical teams. We've had a lot of Pakistani-American doctors volunteer with us. This is my son, Tim, he's 21 years old. He's a senior in, in a University in Maryland right now, but he came to Pakistan with me. And I want to tell you, I wish I could take all young American kids who don't know about Pakistan, because in the media we hear 2% of the truth 100% of the time about Pakistan, unfortunately. But my son, <laughs> my son got to see Pakistan up close. He got to see Azad Kashmir. He got to see Karachi, he got to see Islamabad and he got to see some of the work we were doing. And when we took off uh, from the plane, uh, in the plane from Karachi, and I was going back to the States with him to do some fundraising, I turned to him and I said, son, uh, so what do you think about Pakistan? A bunch of terrorists? He said, no, dad, they're the strongest people I've ever met in my life. <laughs> so we do these community health fairs where we help, help the children learn about health care uh, and, and about preventive medicine things that they can do, and that they can even help teach their family members and their siblings and their friends so that they don't get sick in the first place. Things about nutrition and, and how to handle water. And uh, But we make it fun. We make it a fun day with music. We have our school health program. This is a DIL school. By the way, this is in a, uh, a DIL school in uh, the Islamabad area um, where we're doing a uh, health care first aid uh, program. This is uh, some of the beautiful uh, children singing to the Pakistan with me. We have a community-based self-sustainable project, which is basically a healthcare community insurance mechanism. Yeah. We're, we're trying to make sure that even though we're not going to be there forever, that we put the power of continued good healthcare into the people's hands by just paying a little bit. It's based on the Islamic principle of take care of your neighbor, main neighbors 40 this way and 40 this way. It's very simple. Everybody, whether they're sick or not, pays a little bit, and then you have a good functioning health center, even if I have to leave because I have to deal with floods or some other place that is now in disaster. This is a couple of my team. I have 100 employees. They're all Pakistani. And 
This is the Tamga Isar medal that we won and uh, another award from the government of Azad Jammu Kashmir. And these are the real heroes. These are huge heroes. These are two cousins. <laughs> the fact is that Raymond Davis was paid 200,000 US dollars a year to be the monster that he is. And he's being a monster over here now. Which I'm glad in one sense because the American people can start to see what this guy is. But the, th the thing that's really, really telling is that for 200,000, not even including his, the cost of his bullets and whatever else they, the, they gave him, but just his salary for a year was $200,000. Well, I'm telling you that $200,000 a year has been my budget to take care of 100,000 plus Pakistanis in disaster per year. 100,000 Pakistanis, children, families, in their time of need, that's what it costs me to help them. And that's the same as they paid this guy. So now, maybe we should talk to the US government about their priorities and why a drone missile is used when the cost of a drone missile can put 2,000 children through school for a year with food and nutrition and books and clothes and everything else. But this picture here is important because I would like America to know that instead, when I went to this place, instead of treating me with hatred and wanting to kill me, they embraced me and let me hold their children like I was an uncle. Now, this was in Haiti, and the only reason I want to really bring up Haiti here is because 200 Pakistani American doctors came and worked with my team in a joint operation with Shine Humanity and Islamic Medical Association of North, North America. And 200 Pakistani Americans came, and I ran into, uh, what's his name? Geraldo Rivera with Fox News. And I ran into Anderson Cooper with CNN, and I told them about these Pakistani Americans doing a great job, Muslim Americans doing a great job. How about if we do a story on them? Fasl Shazad, they say, tries to blow up Times Square, and he's all over the page, made in Pakistan. How about made in Pakistan for these people? These guys down here, you see these guys doing amazing work, like Dr. Pervez uh, Malik and uh, Dr. Khan from Nassau uh, Hospital. You can see the hospitals up here in this corner uh, picture, just completely destroyed. So these guys did amazing stuff in tents, surgeries, and all kinds of amazing things, but nobody ever heard of them. Nobody ever heard about them. Every, every firefighter that came down from New York City, they had him on CNN, it was 24 seven coverage. I just don't understand why they didn't do a five minute piece on these wonderful people. I guess some people have their own agenda. I guess that's what it boils down to. So when those floods happened last year, we responded. This is uh, in a helicopter. This is Balochistan, it doesn't have a lake or a river uh, anywhere near this size. And you can see the villages are flooded, people living in tents, their places of uh, business and their homes in ruin, roads completely washed out. Up in Kohistan where I did a mission with IU Medical College, up here in Kohistan in these beautiful mountains, it really got beat up. That was a village down there where that little island is to the right of it, but it went completely washed out. All the bridges in SWAT and, and, and Kohistan got washed out. This is another picture of a village that was washed out. A lot of people in this flood that's happening right now and last year, the biggest thing, one of the biggest things is the loss not only of their homes but their livestock. So it's all they have in many cases. So people were just getting what they could, salvaging whatever they could. Oscar, he's a friend of mine, we do music together for the children of Pakistan. It's called Sonic Peacemakers. And uh, we're working together. He came up and gave out some, uh, some stuff and, and a lot of his own personal money as well. And we brought, of course, eat gifts for children and these big pumps were able to, to take the, uh, some of the water up to the irrigation canals so they could save some of their crops. And of course, children were suffering from the waterborne diseases and severe dehydration, skin infections, and lots of uh, uh, problems with not having the nutrition they needed. This is in Balochistan, very tough area. This lady here, she needed, uh, she was pregnant. It was very hot. 
There was no, there was just what little shade we could give her and an IV drip. Um, and it's a lot of suffering was going on there. But my team uh, was going by boat, airplane, trains, planes, automobiles, working in tents. These are some of the volunteer doctors that came with us, like Dr. Samia in there, and uh, Dr. Ayu, Dr. Shai Mufour, Dr. Zara Shah. And they did wonderful things, my team, and get on with their lives and rebuild them. These are very tough people, and they will survive. No doubt about that. I have a medic that I worked with in Haiti. He's in these pictures here. His name is Ar Armadeus. And Armadeus is a special kind of character. We worked in Japan and Haiti together. And he's over there working now, and it's his first time in Pakistan. And he's saying the same thing as me. He's like, Todd, these people are amazing. They're wonderful. I said, I told you so. I wish I could just get everybody, all these, these Goras, over to Pakistan. <laughs> In closing, I just want to show you a couple of photos. While the medical team is doing their work, I get the guitar out, try to uh, play a little music for the kids, uh, do a little dildo Pakistan for them, and and, uh, and they have a wonderful time. Uh, showing people that you care about them and that they matter is, is a very big thing, and it's part of the reason I've stayed in Pakistan. Um, I'm going to go through these real quick. So this is Sonic Peacemakers. This is another effort that I have. We did the first music in SWAT in five years, Atif Aslam, Lanny Cordola, and I. And it's about using music to bring Pakistan and all that they don't, uh, America doesn't hear about Pakistan through music. Because if you can get in people's hearts through music, you can also get into people's hearts with food. But I'm not a good cook, so that wouldn't work. But with music, we can also uh, get people to understand more about Pakistan. So it's a very important effort. Uh, as well, and we're working with all kinds of artists, Guns N' Roses, Atif Aslam, I put them together. This is Slash and the Guns N' Roses guys playing with Atif in New York City about two months ago. And uh, so this is the kind of thing that we're working, this is me and Sin at a, uh, at a festival, and uh, it was an amazing experience. We helped some of the musicians that were also affected by the flood. So. Uh, you know, Pakistan, I'm sorry it took an earthquake for me to get there, because without the earthquake, I don't think there would be any chance of me have ever known just how wonderful a place it is. And Ari Buzzer from Coke Studio, Mark Lane from Coke Studio, Zilli Huma, who's a young lady in a wheelchair, who I support, and we have a home health aid for her, and we have her computer lessons for her, but she sings beautifully. And fairly soon, we're going to release a song, and you guys will be very impressed with uh, the stuff that she can do. So I, uh, in closing, just want to show you some more of the beautiful children that are in your Prakas and Tar Desert where we're working. And I hope that uh, I haven't taken too much of your time. Thank you. and nobody knows about them, and the New York Times doesn't do a piece on them, and Atif Aslam isn't your friend, and all these other things, because they're not Agora, and they're not from America, but they are just as important, and they've done 10 million times more than I have done. So please support them as well, thank you.
Council General, Councilor General Rifat Masood, and, and before her, um, I believe, uh, uh, Councilor General Abbas. Both of them facilitated me with my visas with no problem. Even the same day I would get them. Um, and uh, so I'd never had a problem there. And actually with the Pakistan Army during the earthquake, I worked very closely with a couple brigadiers and their relief uh, brigades. They helped us with digging bathrooms and with generating power. Even in the morning they would bring us fresh roti. So they did a lot for us. The only, the only problem is that every now and then, like I mentioned, we'll get a, um, an official at a local level that has, uh, he wants, he, they see me, they think that I've got a lot of money to throw around and then they want me to bribe them or something and then they learn very quickly that I have a, a not so nice side of me as well. <laughs> in the 90s, consisting of Imtiaz Ahmed on the vocals. Imtiaz Ahmed on the vocals. By the way, Imtiaz is not here. I, I don't see him. Where is Imtiaz? Stand up, young man. Imtiaz Ahmed. We have Asim Bali on the keyboards. And uh, Nuru Lalodi, who we know as Shonu. Shonu, on the stage. You should be taking his own picture. Shonu is starting to look like a legend. And he, they're going to be accompanied by Maneshwar Judge. And Michael Anand on bass. And then performing tonight with the legend will be Devika. A soulful and versatile vocalist, Nabila has written this wonderful sort of uh, intro. Soulful and versatile vocalist who has played with the band many times and collaborated with many artists and producers, including Shahi Hassan of Vital Science, Maneshwar Jaj, Nurul Al Lodi, and Zubeb Kazi of Oak Studio Studios. Her second solo album, Sari Rath, was released in India by Sare Gama and by five records in Pakistan as both on top of the pop charts in both countries for several months in succession. Devika. Okay, legend. as you see the instruments behind us. It's more of a Western sort of uh, appeal, and we'll bring that to you. But tonight we thought we would do something a little different. We thought that we would visit the roots and the very heritage of our music by presenting a classical piece, uh, something that uh, Austin and I have put together. We've done this, uh, it's on an upcoming album. And it's a beautiful piece, you'll enjoy it. It's a blend of poetry, classical rock, classical tal, and Umidike, you'll enjoy this. Uh, it's based in a 16-beat variation called Sadar Kani. I apologize, I'm still competing with people while I'm speaking. I'm so sorry, Kamoshi Polisi Oje, the same respect that you gave our former speakers. We'd appreciate that, thank you. It's very difficult to be up here in create a synergy of music for those that enjoy music. Uh, in any case, uh, the 16 beats, uh, you can see this variation throughout different forms of music, but again, in this sort of fusion that we're doing of shairi, uh, classical, rod, anthem, I think you'll all enjoy that. So I'll pass the mic to uh, my partner, Asim Khan, and let him take over from here. Please sit and enjoy, humbly. Thank you. Thank you, Manisha. As, as promised, Fez and Fez ki doesn't pesh karne hai. Excuse me. Hopefully you'll stay. Fez saab jindinu, 
इंग्लिश के प्रोफेसर थे तो उसी कॉलेज के प्रिंसिपल और उनके दोस्त डॉक्टर तासीर जो थे वो ही वॉज मैर टू अ ब्रिटिश वूमेन एक दफ़ा उनकी बेगम की छोटी बहन एवज उनसे इंग्लैंड से मिलने आई तो डॉक्टर तासीर और उनकी बेगम ने सोचा कि शी बी गुड फिट फॉर फैज अहमद फैज अहमद फैज साहब तो क्यों ना इन दोनों की मुलाकात करा दी जाए तो इसी सिलसिले में उन्होंने बहुत बड़ी महफिल का इंतज़ाम किया बहुत से दोस्त अहबाब बुलाए फैज साहब भी वहाँ पर मौजूद थे तो जब एवज उस हॉल में आई तो शी वॉज ड्रेस इन ईस्टर्न मैनर शलवार कमीज पहनी हुई है दुबट्टा हाथों में मेहंदी कानून में बानियाँ कानून में बानियाँ फॉर फैज साहब इट वॉज लव एट फर्स्ट साहब थिंग्स इवेंशली प्रोग्रेस एंड दे एंड अपरिंग मैरिज तो अपनी शादी वाले दिन फैज साहब ने अपनी बेगम एलस के नाम एक नजम लिख के पेश की जिसमें उस शाम का जिक्र था जब उन्होंने पहली दफ़ा एलस को देखा था तो वही नज़म हम आपके सामने रात पीलू में सितार कहानी के साथ पेश कर रहे हैं इस नज़म का अनुमान है मौजू सुख सुलगती हुई शाम धुल के निकले अभी चश्मा महताब से रात और मुश्ताक निगाहों की सुनी जाएगी और उन हाथों से मस्त होंगे ये तरसे हुए हाथ उनका आंचल है कि रुखसार के पैराहन है कुछ तो है कोई जाते हैं जिससे चिलमन रंग जाने जुल की बहू धनी छाओ टिम टिमाता है वो आलोजा अभी तक के नहीं आज फिर उसने दिल आरा कि वही कछो वही खाबीदा सिया वही काजल की लगी रंगे रुखसार पे हल्का सोबाजे का होगा संदली हाथ पे धुंधली सी हिला की पहरे अपने अवकार के अशार के दुनिया है ये जाने मजमून है यही शाहिद माना है क्या गुजरी 
ان دبکے ہوئے شہروں کی فرامہ مخلوق کیوں فقط مننے کی حسرت میں جیا کرتی ہے یہ حسی کھیت تھٹا پڑتا ہے جو بن جائے گا کس لیے میں فقط تھوک ہوگا ہے شہر ایک سے پر اسرار کڑی دیواریں جل بجھے دن میں ہزاروں کی جوانی کے جراب یہ ہر ایک گانگ پہ اور خوابوں کی مقدل گا ہے کہ جن کے پرتوں سے چراغا ہیں ہزاروں کے دماغ